might glorify him. And that is the expressed purpose of why we are saved. To live to the glory of God. So that's why this must be one of the pillars of any church that's seeking to please God. It has to be the consuming desire of each of us to love God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our strength, and all of our mind. The totality of us, 24 hours a day, asking the question, how can I worship you in outward, upward, and inward direction? It's profound for us to love God like that. And it's possible for us to love God like that. And the question would be this. How does your life measure up in regards to worship? Because there's so many people who are just missing what God has called us to. You know, it's... Uh, I, I don't know where each of you are. I, I really have no clue where you are. But, but you might need to repent of this. You might need to say... And this is what the word repent means, okay? So you're going this way in life. I'm living for me. I'm living in the direction... And you stop and turn. That's the word repent. And, and, and then the word confess means, uh, it's two words, homo legio, homo of the same kind, legio words. Then I'll say the same words. I, I'm walking this way. I, I hear something different, what worship is. I stop. I say the same thing that God is saying and I go a different direction. And maybe that's where you need to be today. Maybe this afternoon you need to evaluate your life and think, am I wasting my life or am I fulfilling my God-ordained purpose where God came to seek me so that I could be a worshiper of Him? It almost sounds simplistic, but I think there's so many Christians who are missing this and they end up, one day we'll stand before God and, and, and our goal is going to be to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And, and if we don't worship God like this, the three dimensions of worship, actively, 24 hours a day, with all the people that we're with, in every situation, no matter what comes our way, if we don't live like this, we can't possibly hear that. And so, let me encourage you, as part of this church, and part of any church, to be a worshiper of God, and, and, and now to take this and to contemplate what it means for me practically. I'd uh, not only encourage you this afternoon to sit down and ask, how does my life measure up? But now, what's the action steps that I can take to be a worshiper of God. So that next week, Doug could put my picture and my life up on the PowerPoint and they could see that my life is truly one of being a worshiper. Let me encourage you strongly to uh, be a person like that. Do you agree? And, and if you don't, write me. Let me know. I'd love to engage with that. I really would. I'd love to hear what you have to say about it. And, uh, and if you had a story of success, I'd love to hear about that too. Uh, write me and say, you know, this was an encouragement to my heart this week and, and here's how it worked out for me and, and let me know what that is. I'd love to hear about that. Uh, if you're struggling with that and you need help and you're saying, I just can't get it, uh, I really would love to hear about that also. Uh, I, I think that there's some help that can be done and, and at least I could pray for you and, uh, and with you. So let me know how things are going on this thing. We need to be a church that's proclaiming the authority of God's word without apology and we need to be a church that's lifting high the name of Jesus in worship. 24 hours a day. I hope that you'll be that kind of believer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for um, all that you do for us. And um, we thank you that your word teaches us how we should live it. Because there's so many people with so many opinions. And, and, and really, God, um, I'm sick of all the opinions. I don't even know which ones are right. Uh, his, hers, mine, the other one. But God, you've given us your truth and it, it's, it's like a level. It, it, it's always dead on. It, it never misses. It, it, it's perfect. And, and you tell us that we've been designed to be worshipers. And, and that's how we're made. And, and we're going to worship something. And then you tell us that the only way to live the fulfilled and satisfied life is not to chase the things of this world. The billions of things there are to chase after. But to solely chase you first and foremost. And then God, you give us opportunities to demonstrate where we're not doing well on that or places that we're doing well. And, and you give us life and, and you lead us there. And Father, as we think about that this afternoon, as we contemplate how is my life being lived? Is it one that is representative of true godly worship? Or is it one that represents worshiping self? 
And Father, I pray that you'll work in our hearts and help us to take those things that steal worship that's rightfully yours away and we'll give it back to you. And Father, I pray that you'll change us one person at a time, one decision at a time, as we seek to be pleasing and honoring to you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.